This is a great book. I talk about this book all the time in videos when people ask me, you know, what can they do to, you know, learn X, Y, Z? Because in order to learn higher level mathematics, you have to know the stuff that's in this book. You have to know how to write proofs. And I think that this is a really good book to do that with. Now I have other proof writing books and I think this is probably, this might be my most recent purchase uh, when it comes to proof writing books. Uh, someone was leaving comments saying, oh, you should check out this book. And I was like, oh, I looked it up and it was, it was kind of expensive. It was like $30. And I was like, ah, I don't want to spend that much money. You know, I already have proof writing books. Do I really need another one? And so I bought it and I am super impressed. I've done several of the examples uh, from this book. I've done some of the exercises. Uh, I've read some portions of the book. Um, yeah, it's just a solid book. It does a great job explaining, uh, I gotta give it a whiff, sorry. Vacuous truths. Uh, let, let's take a look at the content so you can see what it's about. How to prove it. I, I really like this book. Department of Mathematics and Computer Science. Oh, also, it's, it's well printed. Um, uh, I've, I've read this book in bed multiple times and it still survived. Cambridge University Press, cool. And here's the copyright, 1994. Uh, reprinted in 95 and then in 96. And here are the contents. So you can see what's in this book. And it's really the explanations, the examples. It's just very well written. Excellent, excellent book. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look at the preface. Let's read this here. Students of mathematics and computer science often have trouble the first time they're asked to work seriously with mathematical proofs because they don't know the rules of the game. What is expected of you if you are asked to prove something exactly? What distinguishes a correct proof from an incorrect one? This book is intended to help students learn the answers to these questions by spelling out the underlying principles involved in the construction of proofs. Many students get their first exposure to mathematical proofs in a high school course on geometry. Unfortunately, students in high school geometry are usually taught to think of a proof as a numbered list of statements and reasons, a view of proofs that is too restrictive to be very useful. There is a parallel with computer science here that can be instructive. Early programming languages encourage a similar restrictive view of programs as a numbered list of instructions. Now computer scientists have moved away from such languages and teach programming by using languages that are that encourage an approach called structured programming. The discussion of proofs in this book is inspired by the belief that many of the considerations that have led computer scientists to embrace the structured approach to programming apply to proof writing as well. You might say that this book is that this book teaches structured proving. Wow. Wow. Introduction. They say, what is mathematics? High school mathematics is mostly concerned with solving equations and computing answers to numerical questions. College mathematics deals with a wider variety of questions involving not only numbers, but also sets, functions, and other mathematical objects. What ties them together is the use of deductive reasoning to find the answers to questions. When you solve an equation for X, you are using the information given by the equation to deduce what the value of X must be. Similarly, when given the equation to deduce what, oh, sorry. Similarly, when mathematicians solve other kinds of mathematical problems, they always justify their conclusions with deductive reasoning. Yeah, interesting. Let's zoom out here. Yeah, so here we have uh, a truth table. So lots of examples in this book. Um, that's one of the things uh, I like about the Velman book is that it has uh, lots of examples. Uh, they're good examples. The proofs are well written. There's another truth table. Um, I think uh, it's a solid book. And the best way to get good at this, by the way, like to get, like if you buy this book, so first of all, 
the prereq for this is nothing like just the desire to learn really i mean many schools they'll put like like some type of like gatekeeper course they'll, they'll, they'll put a requirement on this course like uh, calc 2 or something or just some random course you got to take before you can take a proofwriting course um and just to make sure you just you, you've had some math and you know you have some mathematical maturity i guess i guess that's why they do it but in theory you know you could just go buy this book and you could start reading it and it will take your math to the next level in the sense that it will teach you how to write proofs and once you once you know how to write proofs then you can learn you know abstract algebra you can learn advanced calculus which is also called real analysis um, you can learn topology you know you probably want to start with something like set theory uh, and work your way up from there. Um, I actually have uh, set theory videos. So yeah, yeah, that they're proofs, you know, so you can practice and learn to write proofs. It, it's worth it. It's, if you, if, you, if you can learn to write proofs, you can get a math degree. That's what I always think. Um, because that's, that, that's what you get, right? When you're, when you're done with your degree, you, you have some skills, you know some math and you know how to write math proofs. Here, here's some proofs here. Let's look at these. These look really cool. Suppose A and B are real numbers. Prove that if A is less than B, okay, then A plus B over 2 is less than B. Cool. Suppose X is a real number and X is not 0. Prove that that equation is true, then X is not 8. Suppose A, B, C, and D are real numbers, and A is less than B and D is greater than 0. Prove that if AC is greater than or equal to BD, then C is greater than D. These look fun, right? Just want to work some of these out, you know? And uh, so that's that's the cool thing. Um, as far as answers in the back, uh, I, I, I don't... I've worked out a lot of the exercises in this book, and I've worked out a lot of the examples, but I, I don't think that there are answers uh, in this book. But it, when you do the proof, you know you did it right. That's the thing, right? So it's like, oh yeah, I know I did it right. Because, well, once you know how to write proofs and you prove something, you know you did it right. So uh, to me, the fact that this book doesn't have answers is honestly, I hate to say this, but it's not that big of a con. Uh, because most of, you know, I could probably solve most of these. So it's not that huge of a deal. But if you're trying to learn on your own, it is a big con. However, however, I don't think it's that big of a deal. And I know it sounds weird, but he gives really good examples in the sense that like after you, if you can, if you can do the, the examples that he gives you, like if you can do these little proofs, like here's, here's a little proof. If you can do these and if you can understand these, then the way this book is structured is such that you're going to be able to do a lot of the exercises too because they're on the same level. So, and you'll know if you did them right. So yes, it would be good if there weren't answers, but um, I, I don't want it to take away from how awesome this book is, the fact it doesn't have answers, you know what I mean? And here's a bunch of proofs here, a bunch of things to prove. I always think that, you know, if you know how to prove it, do it. And if you feel confident about it, do it and prove it. And if we figure it out, it just raises your confidence. And then it's your proof. And your proof is way easier to read than Velman's proof in the back of the book, if he had one. You know what I mean? So, like, once you know how to prove things, um, it's easier for you to just prove it yourself than have to read their proof. Also, it's more fun to prove it yourself. Uh, reading their proof is not as fun as <laughs> proving it yourself, in my opinion. Anyways, enough about proofs, although this is a book on proof writing. Just ranting about proofs. Um, great book. I definitely recommend it. Uh, it's called How to Prove It. It's by Velman. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description. Um, if you want to learn math, check out my courses. I have math courses. I have tons of courses. Calculus, differential equations, trig, advanced calculus, abstract algebra. They're all on Udemy, but if you get them, uh, please use the links from my website, mathsorcerer.com or freemathbits.com or from any of my videos as it helps me greatly. And I lowered the price to the bare minimum, so you should get a low price. Also, if you found any value in this content, Subscribe if you want to. Key takeaway is this book is awesome. It's super good. Um, it does have some harder problems. So uh, like in the exercises, you know, there's some that are harder, but like a lot of them are pretty easy. So like it'll make you feel good. It's like, oh yeah, I know how to do some of these, you know. But yeah, no answers is, is kind of a bummer, but still worth getting, still worth it.
Still an amazing book. Keep doing mathematics.